Hello and welcome to part 6 of the chapter working with functions. I hope you have watched the other parts of this series. If not, you can always check out. I have given the link in the description. So today's topic of discussion will be passing strings, list, tuples and dictionary. From class 11, you already know about the concept of strings, list, tuples and dictionaries. So now in this session, we will learn how to pass all these data types into functions okay so a function may pass values strings list tuples and dictionaries as arguments till now we have passed only values into the functions but in this session we will learn how to pass strings list tuples and dictionaries so we'll begin with strings then list then tuples and finally we'll wind up with passing of dictionary we will see one one code of each data type so let's begin with the passing of string as an argument so let us consider one code so this is the code so we will learn how this code works in this code i have passed string as an argument so here so this is the code okay so here how will the program execute the program will execute so first line is obviously a comment so the program will begin execution from line number two from line number two it will go to line number which it will go to line number four so let's say this is the output screen so in line number four what we have testing passing string as parameter so if this is the output screen what will come as the first line of output testing passing string as a parameter means this particular line will be coming as the first line of output after that see here what is the name of the function the name of the function is try string so this is what this is the function calling so here we have called the function try string so within that we have passed string as the argument what is the string we have passed we have passed the string as welcome how can you say that this is a string because it is enclosed within quotes so this welcome will be carried and it will be copied by the variable str so the variable is str so what will be stored in str in str it will be stored welcome so from there come to the third line so in the third line what we have print str so what is stored in str welcome so the next line of output will be welcome so if we need to trace it it will go something like this first the line number two then line number four then line number five from line number five it will again go to line number two then line number three this is the tracing okay so what will be the output here this will be the output so let's run this program and see so this was our program so if we run it we'll get the output as testing passing string as parameter and the second line is welcome okay so this is how we pass string as an argument so this was our code so what we have passed in this line we have passed a string after that we have got the following output okay next we'll go to passing list as an argument so this is the code for list let's try to understand the code in details so this is the code for list so what will happen here here at first what is the name of the function the name of the function is list try so at first line number one will be executed after that it will come to the main part the main part will start from line number 10 so it will come to line number 10 in line number 10 we have given a variable lst and we have assigned a list with the following values so some values are odd and some values are even so the aim of this program is to count the number of even numbers and number of odd numbers separately so after that what i have done here i have taken two variables one as even other as on odd and after that here i have done the function calling list try and within bracket i have sent the argument as lst so the entire list this particular list will be copied to this variable lst so after that we have initialized even to zero and odd to zero so the current value of even is zero and odd is zero after that what we have for i in list so how many values are there in this particular list one two three four five six seven eight nine so we'll have indexes 
like 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, 18 will be for 0, 45 will be for 1, 66 will be for 2 and so on. So, for i in list. So, at first the index 0, it will check take index 0. What is there in index 0? It is 18. So, at first the value 18 will be taken from the list. So, 18 has gone. So, here what will be checked? If i modulo divide 2 equals to equals to 0, what is the value of i now? The value of i is 18. 18 modulo divide 2 equals to equals to 0. Is it true? Yes, the remainder will be 0 if we divide 18 by 2. So, it will come to the next line where even equals to even plus 1. What is the current value of even? The current value of even is 0. So, 0 plus 1, the current value of even is 1. So, after that, else will be skipped and then it now we are within the for loop then again the for loop will be executed now what will be taken by the for loop this value 45 so for so here if 45 modulo divide 2 equals to equals to 0 is it true or false it is false because if we divide 45 by 2 we will get the remainder as 1 and not 0 therefore it will go to the else part so what will be there odd equals to odd plus one what is the current value of odd the current value of odd is zero zero so zero plus one is one so the current value of one will be replaced by the current value of odd zero will be replaced by one next what will be taken 66 will be taken so here if 66 modulo divide 2 equals to equals to zero 66 modulo divide 2 equals to equals to zero so, is it 0? Yes, the remainder will be 0. Therefore, this part will become true. So, what will be the logic? Even equals to even plus 1. What is the current value of even? The current value of even is 1. So, now it will be 1 plus 1 is how much? 2. So, the current value of even will be 2. So, in a similar manner, the loop will run until all the values are counted. Whenever it is an even number this part will become true whenever it is an odd number it will come to the else part and at the end the number of even numbers and number of odd numbers will be counted so how many even numbers are here 1 2 3 4 5 6 so even 6 so finally we will get the value of even as 6 and how many odd numbers are there so 1 2 3 so finally the value of odd will be 3 so how many 1 2 3 so the final the value of odd numbers will be 3 so the value of the variable odd will be 3 so our output will be so as this loop will complete its iteration the value of even will be 6 and value of odd will be 3 after that what is being returned return even comma odd so 6 and 3 respectively are returned and it will be returned to which line it will be returned to line number 11 so now what is the value stored in the variable even 6 what is the value stored at the variable odd 3 so in the next line what will be shown number of even numbers is 6 and number of odd numbers is 3 okay so we'll get the output as follows number of even number 6 number of odd numbers 3 so let's run and see the output here in this case so this is our program so if we run it we'll get the output as number of even number 6 number of odd numbers 3 so here it is not mandatory that you have to initialize the list you can also take a dynamic input so for taking dynamic input what we'll do i'll put this as a comment the previous one i'll put as a comment then so for taking a dynamic list we can put this particular line see the line number 11 lst equals to evil input enter list so you already know that if we want to take a list as an input we have to use the evil function i've already discussed about evil function in the part one of this particular chapter okay so if we run this particular program the output will be enter list so if i give let's say 4 7 9 
and let's say 32 press the enter key so number of event numbers 2 number of odd numbers 2 so obviously the answer is correct so we have 4 and 32 as event number therefore the answer is 2 and 7 as and 9 as odd number therefore again the answer is 2 so it's not mandatory that you have to initialize the list you can also take the list dynamically okay so let's see so this was our code here this is the function calling so we have taken a list as an argument and therefore we have got this as the output moving on we will see how to pass a tuple as an argument so let's take this particular code and try to understand the working of this code so this is the code a very small program so at first line number one will be executed and then it will go to line number four in the line number four this is what this is the function calling the name of the function is baz and what is the tuple i think you already know that for declaring a tuple we have to enclose it within the first bracket three comma one that means a tuple is being passed so this tuple will be carried by the variable my tuple so what is stored at my tuple now three comma one after that here in the second line so after the fourth line the control will go back to the first line and after that the control will go to the second line in second line what we have done here we have done unpacking of tuple we have already discussed unpacking in class 11 so in unpacking what happens the values inside the tuples are taken out so that it can be processed individually so what will be the first value of so here the first value that is 3 will be stored in the variable first and the second value that is 1 will be stored in the variable second okay so in first what is stored 3 in second what is stored 1 but here so after the second line which line will be executed third line here we have returned only the variable first so what will be carried to the fourth line the value of first what is the value of first three so the three will be carried to the variable x so what will be the final value stored in x three so after the third line the fourth line will be executed and finally the fifth line will be executed so what will be the output the output will be returning the first value from the tuple and what is the value being returned here in x the final value is 3 so you will get the output as 3 so in this way we pass tuple so you will get this as the output returning the first value from the tuple similarly as list here you can also go on with dynamic inputs also so here this is our code let's run and see the code so if we run we'll get the output as returning the first value from the tuple colon 3 I hope this is clear next we'll go to the so this was our code this line is the function calling here we have passed a tuple as an argument and therefore we have got the output as follows next moving on we'll go come to the last data type which is dictionary passing dictionary as an argument so this is our code we'll try to understand the code here so here so this is our code so here we have eight lines at first line number one will be executed then it will come to the main function that is line number seven in line number seven c we have defined a dictionary all of you know dictionary has two parts key is to value we have already got it in class 11 so the first part is called key and the second part is called as the value so this is the key this is the key 1001 1002 and 1003 are the keys and allies bob and raj these are the values okay so this dictionary has been created and it is enclosed within the this particular bracket so here what is the name of the function the name of the function is dict try and what is the name of in which the dictionary is stored the dictionary is stored by the name names so this entire dictionary will be copied 
to the variable d so now d also has this particular dictionary after that what is the first line print d so let's if this is the output screen what will be printed in the first line 1001 allies comma 1002 bob and so on means this particular line will be printed exactly okay this will be the first line of output after that let's come to the second line second line what will be printed role separator then name so in the second line role separator name this will be printed in the third line what will be printed this particular design will be printed then come to the next line for k in d so while moving through the dictionary so that we can display it in the form of rows and columns we can iterate in this particular manner so what will be the value of k here the value of k will be the keys of the dictionary what are the keys 1001 1002 and 1003 so in the first iteration what will be taken 1001 will be taken so for k in d print k so what is the first value of k 1001 so it will be printed here then what we have we have a separator so one separator will be there then comma d k so this is the method in which we access the value of a corresponding key so what is the name of the dictionary the name of the dictionary is d so d k means d 1001 so what is the value stored at 1001 the value stored is allies so it will be printed so what will be the line allies okay so what will be the next value of k the next value of k will be 1002 therefore when it will go to the next line it will be printed at as 1002 then again dk so now what is the value of k 1002 what is stored as the value of 1002 bob is stored so here we'll get the answer as bob similarly next 1003 will be printed and the corresponding value for dk now k will be how much 3 so raj will be printed okay after that the control will again return back to the eighth line okay because there is no return statement here so okay okay sorry the control will not return back to the eighth line because this is the function calling so after this line the program will be terminated okay so the flow of control will be line number one line number seven then line number eight then again line number one line number two line number three then line number four then line number five then this loop will then line number six then this loop will be iterated and when all the keys are exhausted then the final result will be printed which is this particular output let's see the output properly so this will be the output of our program okay at first we have directly printed the entire dictionary so this is the output then we have printed it in a systematic manner using the concept of for loop okay so let's run and see this program so this is our program so if we run it we'll get the output as follows at first the entire dictionary is printed <clears throat> after that what happened it is being printed in a tabular format so this is how we pass a dictionary as an argument so here in the eighth line this is the function calling where we have passed the dictionary names and therefore we have got this as the output okay i hope passing of strings list tuples and dictionary through functions is clear okay i'll see you again in the next session